Greetings students from the Burlington Science Center. You know, as I travel from school to school, I meet many with weather wonderers at all the schools who ask me great questions about the weather we experience here in Burlington. One question recently asked me was, hey, Mr. Musselman, how much water is there in a foot of snow? Well, with over one or even two feet of snow coming our way this weekend, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to do our own experiment right here in our backyard. I brought with me today a metric ruler and a graduated cylinder. We're going to use these after the snow is done falling during this storm. Hello again students. It's been 24 hours since we last came outside and as you can see the landscape has changed quite a bit. If we use our meter stick, we can measure exactly how much snow has fallen since we last checked in. I'm gonna stick it in the ground, put my finger where it is. That's 20 inches of snow that's fallen. If we turn the stick around, that's a whole 51 centimeters of snow that have fallen in the past 24 hours. Impressive. Inches and centimeters are just two different ways of measuring height or length. 20 inches equals 51 centimeters. That's about five centimeters for every two inches. We're now gonna collect some of that snow. To do this, we're gonna take a core sample with our graduated cylinder. We're gonna push nice and slow in an area that hasn't yet been shoveled or had any other snow added to it for that matter. So here we go, nice and slow. I've pushed that cylinder all the way to the ground and now I'm going to shovel it out to make sure I get all the snow in the cylinder. Okay, as you can see, the whole cylinder hasn't completely filled. That's because we've captured some air in our cylinder as we were pushing down. Now, that doesn't mean there isn't a full 20 plus inches of snow here. All that means is that this snow that has been light and fluffy here on the surface has been compacted and made denser as we pushed down. So even though there's only 15 inches of snow that appear to be in this cylinder, we're actually going to measure the full 20 inches, 20 plus inches that we measured with our meter stick when we go back inside. All right, students, we've come inside so we can allow the snow to begin to melt. As you can see, I've placed the graduated cylinder <clears throat> on my countertop with a tin foil cover. This is to prevent any water from evaporating and escaping our experiment. With a little time, <clears throat> all of this snow should slowly melt into its liquid form and we'll have some data to add to our data table. Now's a great time to make a prediction about how much water will be left in the cylinder after the snow melts. Will there be the same amount of water as there is snow? Less water than snow? More water than snow? If so, how much? Pause the video and share your prediction with a classmate or friend now. All right, it's been several hours now and our snow has finally melted down to the water that it's made of. Let's take a look, shall we? I had to use this heating pad to accelerate our melting. <clears throat> but as you can see, I'm going to take off the cover and carefully dip in our stick. It's going to go all the way down. Right there, it's a little, it's just about three and a half inches. 
that in centimeters is going to be about 9 centimeters. So we're going to add that to our data table. And now we can do some calculations to see just how much water it takes to make a full foot of snow. <clears throat> Let's use our data table to check our predictions. Was yours correct? As you can see, it took very little water to make all that snow. With the help of a little multiplication and division, I found out that the storm made about five and three quarters inches of snow for every inch of liquid water that fell from the sky last night. That means it took a little more than two inches of liquid water for the storm to create a foot of snow. Now that's cool. In most cases, matter tends to take up less space as it becomes colder. But thanks to some special properties behind water, it does just the opposite. As liquid water starts to freeze, water molecules begin to arrange themselves in a special pattern that like we see on the left. When water is a liquid, the water molecules try to take up as much space as they can in between one another. As a result, snow and ice takes up more space than liquid water. All this talk of the science behind our snow has got me thinking, and I do that best with Mr. Musselman's thinking cap. Now it's your turn to be a blizzard scientist. I'm wondering, do students like you get the same results I did with the snow in your backyard? Do you think you'll get the same results from a future storm? And where does all that water go when the snow starts to melt? <laughs>